Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Church of Religious Science here in New York City. Welcome to all of you who are signing in on our Zoom call. Welcome to everybody who's finding us on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, so welcome, welcome to everyone. To those of you who have uh, been here through our meditation and to everyone who's signing on right now, a uh, special welcome to anyone finding us on social media. It's great to have each and every one of you with us today as a part of our ongoing commitment to spiritual growth and community enrichment. We now have a class every Wednesday. Some of you already know about it. It's our creative living class. It's facilitated by Jimmy, our practitioner here. And uh, we have our ongoing self-healing class, our Louise Hay class every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Uh, you can get on to those broadcasts with the same uh, uh, Zoom details as you joined us this morning. Uh, if you're not watching us on Zoom and you'd like to be part of this community, and if you'd like to receive our e-letter, uh, which we have lots of spiritual insight and gems, simply in a private message, send, uh, send us your contact information. Uh, we should have your whole name, email address, and uh, if you want to get a message, a reminder, uh, uh, send your phone number too, and that way Jimmy will send you a, a gentle text um, message. So those of you who would like to support the center, support our work, there are options in the chat. You can see them. Uh, the technicians post them several times. Uh, so they're there. Also our mailing address for those who'd like to send a check. Uh, I'd like to say that everything we do here is offered at no charge, meaning uh, we're glad to accept love offerings of any amount, uh, but please, do not feel obligated in any way. Uh, we declare we're supplied and supported, and uh, if you're able to, uh, we greatly appreciate it. So let's be have, get ready for today's talk, um, Subconscious Solutions. It's, it's a talk that's peppered with in insights from Louise Hay, Ralph Waldo Emerson, and of course, Ernest Holmes. Uh, we're here to un uncover the boundless treasures that are within us. You'll hear us talk about this endlessly. Uh, Louise Hay would say, uh, deep in the center of my being, there's an inf infinite well of love, source energy, creativity. So as we get into the lesson, you'll hear more about that. We're here to awaken to our own magnificence and to realize the infinite possibilities that life offers us. I have a short story. Uh, this one's called The Unseen Blossom. And here it is. Once in a small village, there lived a young girl named Lizzie. Uh, Lizzie loved to wander the countryside, the forest, uh, by her little community. And she was fascinated by the wonders of nature. One day, she stumbled upon a peculiar plant. It was small and unassuming, yet it radiated a strange, captivating energy. It almost had a quality of glowing. And curious about it, she sought the village elder, a wise woman known for her knowledge of the foliage, the local foliage and trees and flowers. And the elder lady said, she smiled and when she saw the plant, because it's a very extraordinary, unusual plant. She said, ah, this is the unseen blossom. And went on to say, it blooms only once in a lifetime. And it blooms only under the light of the full moon. But its true beauty lies not in the petals you see, but in its roots. Perplexed completely by this, Lizzie then asked her, how can a plant's beauty be in its roots, hidden from the world? And the elder replied, just like this plant, each of us have an inner beauty, a potential that not only that is not always visible to the eye. Each of us have this, our true strength, our true strength, our inner gold. It lies in what we cannot see, our thoughts, our beliefs, and our inner spirit. So that was her message uh, to Lizzie, that our true strength, our inner gold, lies in what we cannot see, our thoughts, our beliefs, and this inner world of spirit. When nurtured, these roots can produce the most extraordinary blossom, one that transforms not just the plant, but everything around it. Lizzie listened to her words 
And then she decided to care for the plant, intrigued by the elder lady's words. Months and months passed, and then under the glow of a full moon, the plant bloomed with radiant flowers, unlike she had ever seen before. She realized then that her belief and her care for the plant, all her unseen efforts had led to this miraculous moment in time. From then on, Lizzie saw the world much differently. She understood that most, the most extraordinary potentials are often hidden, waiting for belief and care to bring them forth into the light. Yes, everyone, yes, it's all within us. It always has been deep at the center of our being. So today we'll talk more about that subject. We're talking a bit about our subconscious and solutions that can be found in learning how to use our subconscious. First, I have a quote from Mark Twain. And he said, humor is our greatest, greatest blessing. Just like a sprinkle of laughter can brighten a day, he said, a sprinkle of belief can transform a life. So change your thinking, change your beliefs, and you'll transform your life. If you'd like now to imagine for a moment that you're, gonna, you're standing at the entrance to a vast gold mine, now, this isn't a gold mine hidden in some remote mountains. Just in your imagination, an extraordinary, vast gold mine. Imagine yourself for a moment that you're standing there, and now you realize it's within you. <laughs> Ernest Holmes brilliantly illuminated this truth by saying, there is a gold mine within you from which you can extract everything. Again, a gold mine within you from which you can extract everything, everything you need to live life gloriously, joyously, and abundantly. There is this aliveness within you. You may not feel it, but you can if you take the time to meditate and slow down and take a pause and center yourself and know that deep in the center, center of your being, there is something. And today I'd like you to think of it as an aliveness. It's an energy buried deep within, and it responds. <laughs> we have everything within us, and yet, with even with that in mind, we all have challenges. I've got lots of examples of lots of people. I'm only going to choose two or three. You've all heard of J.K. Rowling, right? Uh, I'm sure you have. She was the author of the Harry Potter material. And I bring her name up because her work is one of the most successful literary franchises in human history. It's just unbelievable. And amidst every kind of personal challenge, and she had just about all of them, she tapped into this inner gold mine. She tapped into this gold mine to create a magical world that has delighted people all over the world. There have been others, others, very successful examples. I watched a movie not too long ago about Steve Jobs. And a while back, it struck me that he had so much creativity that he could have filled a, a stadium. Uh, his creativity, uh, his dedication, and his just stick to re revolutionized technology. And there have been many others like this. Week by week, we bring, you, we give you examples. And the thing to know about any of, any of these folks or all of them is their success was not, was not about luck. <laughs> it was about recognizing and utilizing an immense potential or potentiality that they had within them. And by staying the course. I see people who've had demonstrations with our Louise Hay material, our science of mind, over the years. I've seen people heal disease and change their, change their life completely. And it's always the ones who stay the course. So occasionally you'll hear us say, don't quit before the miracle happens. Because like the two people I just um, spoke about, Rawlings and Jobs, they had every kind of setback you can imagine. <laughs> they had every reason to quit. Um, but they didn't quit. One of my friends from England always uses that expression, stay the course, stay the course. Uh, Thursday evenings, that Louise Hay material is so transformative, so brilliant, so good, because Louise could take complex material and she would say it's all very simple, or it can be. 
But the thing is, it's about applying it day by day, week by week, uh, tuning in regularly. I mean, we're not the total answer, but our classes, the two or three we offer, are absolutely you know great reminders because we spoon feed the information. We keep reminding you how great you are <laughs> and the power that you have at your disposal. So back to the people I'm speaking of, Rawlings and Jobs, they knew they had it. They had this thing and they were determined to find a way to use it. And that reminds me of my early science of mind classes. Uh, when I used to take them years ago, the old time teachers used to say to us that we need to, put a, we need to learn to put a demand on consciousness. So you probably haven't heard it said that way before, and people don't even say it too often anymore. Uh, it's still great, though. Put a demand on consciousness. What it taught me was life is going to respond to me. Life is going to respond to my consciousness. So if I put a demand on consciousness for a better life, a more expansive life, a life that's uh, more forgiving, a life that's a little bit more light, uh, more interesting, more prosperous, uh, happier, uh, I'll have that life. But you know, the thing is, you have to really want it. <laughs> uh, there's a 12-step program that one of the sayings is, willingness is the key. So the question is, are you willing to step forward into a world that's much better than the one you presently are living in? Uh, you know, because life is going to say yes to you if you're willing. If you're willing to step into a, uh, a higher vibration and enter into a different experience, then it's incumbent upon you to let go of the things that are in the way of that. That could be people, could be places and things. And it's not that you're better than or anything like that. It's just that you know that you live and move and you have your being in this divine substance and life is wooing you and you're going to just hitch your wagon to the stars, and you're going to just go for it. Um, you don't have to stay down there in the muck. <laughs> you don't have to be in the world where everybody's talking about ain't it awful and poor me. That doesn't have to be your reality. It certainly wasn't the reality of Steve Jobs or uh, Rawlings or any of the people. I'm also going to speak about the Wright brothers today. These people developed a vision. They realized that they have power, and they knew that they they kept applying and you know, application, application, you know, then they would eventually have dem a demonstration. Now, putting a demand on consciousness, again, I don't think most teachers teach it that way anymore, uh, but I understand when it was taught to me what they're trying to say to me. Whatever was in the creative people I just mentioned, um, uh, Rollings and Jobs uh, and the Wright brothers today uh, is in you. Whatever power they have, you have. And you can put a demand on consciousness too, if you want to, if you're willing to. And as you do, life is going to re reveal to you what's next for you, what you could do. You'll let that inspiration come in when you put a demand on consciousness. It'll help you understand your gifts, and you have them. You may not be aware of them, but you have them. And you'll, as you put a demand on consciousness, you may learn uh, the best way to express these gifts. You might find out who you've come here to be. Uh, Marian Williamson would suggest that playing small is not the answer. The old biblical references would say, hey, don't hide your light under a bushel. You're here to shine. You're here to um, express life and to do so in a wonderful way. Uh, it's, and there's no competition. There's something brilliant and wonderful about everybody just by virtue of who you are, meaning you are an individualization of uh, spiritual life. You are one in a, a billion. You're, there's never been another like you, and you're here, and you're extraordinary, though many of you don't feel that way about, about yourself. It's still the truth of you. Holmes, again, remember this gold mine isn't just about a metaphor. It's a profound reality. Within you lies the intelligence to solve any problem that comes in front of you and the creativity to innovate. You have, uh, you have superpowers, super abilities, and one of them is you can change your mind, you can pivot, you can go in a different direction. Just because things have happened a certain way for years, <laughs> you can be in a new moment today and the whole world can turn because you have formed a new reality and you've made, it, made a decision. Raymond Charles Barker, our founder here in New York, wrote the book, The Power of Decision. 
All power is yours. So we want to remember that we have this power. It's time to pick up your metaphorical pickaxe at that gold mine and start mining. You might challenge yourself by saying there is that which is within me that knows. It knows what's next. It knows what's good for you and what's best for you. The most thrilling discovery isn't to be found outside of you or in outer space or in the outer realms. The most thrilling thing in the world is to be found within you. Ernest Holmes reveals, reveals this uh, as the miraculous power of our subconscious mind, a mind that always responds to us. Uh, you remember the movie, The Secret, it, when they, you're thinking of the higher power, it's tip, they paint the picture of the GD in the sky, which is, it always says, your wish is my command. So Holmes was saying, this miraculous power of our subconscious mind always is responding to us affirmatively. It, Louise Hay echoed the same thing by saying, you have power to heal your life. Your subconscious mind, she said, is very much like a fertile garden. If you plant thoughts of success, you will bring them forth. Uh, most of you won't remember Roger Bannister. Uh, he's the guy who shattered the belief that running a mile under four minutes was impossible. His belief rewrote, rewrote history. There have been so many others who have gone past everything that was before. I have a friend, uh, a minister who's always telling funny tales. She says, as we delve into the secrets of our subconscious, she said, remember, it's like a garden. She said, if you find any strange thoughts popping up, maybe it's time to do some weeding. So we talk about that a lot. Uh, we make jokes about it. Pull up the weeds. Uh, wherever you see a negative thought pop up, do your best to neutralize it, replace it, put in affirmative thoughts, more powerful thoughts, uh, release the need for the negatives. Part of your job, part of my job, is where I'm working with consciousness is to keep trading in the lesser ideas that I have held or harbored for the greater. Keep trading in the ideas, the lesser ideas, for the ones that are more expansive. So seriously, uh, as soon as you spot them, release the need for them. We forget, we forget, but we don't know how powerful our thoughts are. I'm telling you, your thinking and your beliefs are so incredibly powerful. There's no such thing as an idle thought. So we want to get a handle on our thinking and our beliefs. We want to pay attention to what you know we're thinking throughout the day. And if you go to the negative side, stop yourself <laughs> mid-sentence and say, this isn't true, I release the need for you, and turn that around. Um, it's never too late to start your day over. You might remember Napoleon Hill. He, uh, he said, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. So yes, you know, whatever you set your sights on and you hitch your wagon to these bigger ideas, you know, whatever your mind can conceive of and believe, you've got to believe that these things are in your life and they're for you. You will walk into that reality. You will achieve these things. Again, folks, all thought is creative. Your present life is a reflection of your consciousness. It isn't a reflection of other person, people's consciousness. Your life is about you. My life is about me. So if you don't like what you see, then be open to the idea of changing your thinking. Take a pause, go within, calm yourself down, meditate, do some deep breathing, whatever it is for you to slow yourself down and ask for guidance. The universe always answers. <laughs> Again, deep at the center of your being is this infinite well of intelligence, creative intelligence, and it responds to you. So as you learn to slow down and you ask for guidance, you'll have guidance. You can turn anything around if you're really determined. Look at the Wright brothers as an example again. That was Orville and Wilbur, you might recall. Without any kind of formal training in, in engineering, they taught themselves over and over through trial and error and experimentation, learning from every single failure. And they were refining, refining just like we do. You know, we've all learned a lot. Everything we've been through has brought us to where we are right now. In regard to them, you know, the rest of the story is history. They transformed the dream of flight into reality. 
So there's nothing that you can't do if you really want to do it. Um, all the universe says yes to you. I had a reverend, uh, one of my, I've had several great teachers, Reverend Bill Cameron, one of my favorites, was always excited telling his students that we have this creative intelligence within us. We have unlimited access <laughs> and that life is always saying yes to us. He called it the best kept secret of the ages. He said, God and you, the hope of your glory. And he said to us back then, he says, you know, the problem is most people don't realize who they are, what they are, and what they possess. So realize with me today that you have everything you need. We come into this teaching and we realize that we have it within us. Uh, we, and we learn that we can access it. We can go within. We can ask questions and we will have answers. When you awaken to the fact that you are the whole bit, as Barker used to say, and to know that that life is responding to you and that you are an individualization of this incredible life. When you awaken to that and you realize, oh my goodness, I'm here and it's responding to me, that's a big deal. When you wake up and realize I'm one with the one and it's responding to me now, that's a big realization. When you live with that connection with Source, I'm one with it, and it's responding to me now, then, my gosh, then think of the things you can begin to create. You'll want to shift your thinking. You'll want to shift your consciousness because you're going to realize I'm creating this a mess, and I don't want to create a mess anymore. So I can stop and start thinking differently. If you were in a 12-step program, they would say you can change your playgrounds and change your playmates. In other words, you can commune with great thoughts, great thinkers, great people, or you can keep hanging on with what you've been doing. You know, keep thinking the same way. And from the computer days, early computer days, garbage in, garbage out. If you keep thinking negative thoughts and all that, your life is going to reflect that. So Bill Tolliver used to tell me, Dr. Bill, one of my teachers, that we can commune with great people. Today, you can go on YouTube. You can learn a lot. You can read great books. You can lift yourself up. You don't have to settle for less. <laughs> you were meant to soar. So I, I'm hoping some of these talks are inspiring you to let go of the things that don't serve you and embrace bigger ideas. Uh, learn. Step into more prosperous worlds more successful worlds, worlds, happier, happier worlds. When you start to understand that is, it is you and your beliefs, your thoughts that are creating your life, it's, it's all about you that's <laughs> creating your reality, uh, then you'll start to do something about it. In our teaching, when we think of our, our mind, uh, it, might, it, it might be good to think of it as a tree. This tree has two main parts. The branches you can see in the roots, which are hidden underground. The branches are like the conscious mind, the part of your mind that thinks and makes decisions during the day. The roots, on the other hand, represent the subconscious mind, the vast subconscious. This part is hidden, but it's really important because it holds all your deep feelings and your memories. Carl Jung, famous psychologist, talked about how these two parts of our mind work together. He said that what we think about consciously all the time will affect our deeper subconscious mind. That's the part that we can program. <laughs> when Ernest Holmes said there's power for good in the universe, we can use it. So when Jung is talking about how these two parts of our mind work together, he said that what we think about consciously will affect our deeper subconscious mind. It's like if you take care of the branches of the tree, the roots will grow stronger also. When we fill our conscious mind with positive and helpful and life-giving thoughts, uh, it's like we're taking care of the whole tree. <clears throat> These good thoughts go down into our subconscious and they help make us help make better choices and they react in better ways in the future. So it's all about giving, it's all about getting every part of ourselves, both the branches and the roots to work together in a peaceful and balanced way. This means listening to spirit, inquiring within, slowing down, listening to what's inside of us, and let it guide us. It's always there. Spirit is always there wooing us, I learned from Emerson. Now let's talk about how to use this idea in our lives. 
Ernest Holmes, <clears throat> excuse me, in our textbook, said that when we start to understand and use the power of our deeper selves, our thoughts and dreams can, can start to become real in the outside world. This is the exciting part, making sure that our conscious thoughts, you can think of the tree and the branches, make sure our consciousness is in tune with our subconscious power, the roots. When we do this, we can really change our lives. It's like the tree growing stronger and healthier. It seems magical when you make all these demonstrations, but life will respond to us as we align with what we want on the outside, with what we believe and feel on the inside. We can make amazing things happen. Within us lies the incredible power to heal, to overcome the toughest things, and to achieve goals beyond any goals we've ever had before. This isn't just a possibility. It's our reality that's waiting to be manifest. When we tap into our inner strength, our resilience, and to awareness of who we are, we don't just change our lives. We transform them. <laughs> you know, you're being about your father's business. I always remember that story uh, with Jesus. He's just not interested. His mother wants him to do different things. And his answer was, I need to be about my father's business or spirit's business. I would think many of us on this call, if you're tuned into these teachings, are really attempting to be about spirit's business, uh, meaning you don't really have a lot of interest in uh, getting involved in what everyone's getting involved in. Uh, so we're each spiritual beings. We're here to grow. We're here to expand. We're here to learn lessons. We're here to learn. We're here to love. Uh, so as we work with this teaching and realize that we are inlet and outlet of this activity, we become the architects of our own destiny because we know life is responding to us. We turn obstacles into stepping stones and dreams into achievements. So we all, we all want to embrace our journey knowing it's good and it's incredible. And we want to be grateful for our commitment to our growth and we want to pat ourselves on our back, our back and away for realizing that we've come this far, we've learned this much, and uh, we're encouraged as we meet together with like-minded people because we're all evolving and growing together. We find not only success, but we find transformation uh, in our teaching. Together in this teaching, um, we are unstoppable because we're all spirit and we're all expanding. As Dr. Holmes would say, and Louise Hay would say to us, remember that this journey starts within. To wrap it up, or conclude, in conclusion today, let's embrace the wisdom that Louise Hay taught, that Ernest Holmes taught, that Ralph Waldo Emerson taught. Our session today was about learning, it's about transformation, awakening to the infinite riches that you have within yourself and learning how to use our subconscious mind, knowing that life always, always, always responds to, you, to us so you can learn, so you can have lives of joy, abundance, and fulfillment. Let's affirm together, closing idea, divine spirit, universal source of all that we, is. As we gather today, united in the radiant glow of truth and love, together we affirm the boundless potential that resides within each and every one of us, a gold mine at the core of our being. We acknowledge that infinite wisdom, creativity, unshakable strength lie within us as gifts of this universal source. As we close this affirmative prayer, we open our hearts and our minds to the endless possibilities that await us. We step forward with great faith, knowing that we're guided, supported, loved, and we're ready to embrace the miracles that are unfolding right as we speak and the manifestations of our deepest intentions. And now as we transition from this sacred moment, we turn our microphones over to you, our beloved community. We invite you to share your good news, your stories of triumph, your, uh, your demonstrations. So let's celebrate together our demonstrations of joy, healing, and friendship. Uh, in our sharing together, we find strength, inspiration, and connection with one another. So in gratitude and with great anticipation from hearing from the rest of you today, we will say, and so it is, and so it is. Thank you.